Good morning, everybody. Hello, how are you? Welcome along. Uh, it's Monday. It's the, oh, let's see, 4th of December. I'm just getting myself sorted out. Uh, last little bits. There we go. Right, so Monday the 4th of December 2022. This is your 8am movement snack that we're heading towards. Just to be final little bits, look. Oh, one of those mornings. Granddaughter with us trying to get her out of the house uh, to go to school. Um, little bits and bobs just need to do before um, getting in. Where does time go? Hey, blimey, a couple of minutes ago, you were saying it was, um, when I asked Alexa, it was 7.50. Right, I've got, just got time to do this. Then on the task it again, it's 7.57. Good grief, where the hell is happening? What the heck is happening? Time flies. Right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is your 8 a.m. movements now. Well, it's Monday the 4th of December 2022. <clears throat> welcome to this uh, first one of the day. It's about getting the body moving. Um, boosted circulation-wise first, but we do that with every snap, don't we? The key thing about this, about mobilising all those joints. Joints that we're going to use throughout the day as well, so nothing new. We use them. They'll be used as we do our everyday tasks. But here we can focus on mobilising them, getting them ready to take on whatever the day has to throw at us. Now, I don't seem to have any comments going to give at the moment, and I can see Dawn, you've changed your icon. You've got a Christmas hat on. I'm loving it. <laughs> Let me see if I can get my comments to No, they're not coming up. I don't know why old Facebook has decided to, to play silly again and not give me any comments. So I'll have to catch up with you afterwards. But good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you. If you are coming on catch up, pop us a comment in. Those that are you alive, I will catch up with you later on. Ocast, it's not raining. It's okay. Um, fingers crossed it stays that way. As we head into, oh, what, we've got three weeks before. I mean, today, in three weeks' time, will be Boxing Day. How crazy is that, eh? Where's this year gone? And that means we're hurtling towards our third anniversary as well. Good grief. What on earth's going on? 30 days. Yep. Let's do a bit of countdown. In 30 days, you divide that by 10. That gives us three. Uh, times that by um, uh, 365. And that gives us where we're heading towards, three years down the line from where we were. Goodness gracious me, I do not know what is going on. Anyway, we are heading towards 8 o'clock, so should we have our 3, 2, 1? I'm going to lose a little bit off the bottom that tells me comments will appear here, where even though they're not appearing there. And we're ready to go. Now, first things first, have our 3, 2, 1, shall we? So I think as we're heading, as we are, towards there, we need to ho, 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 Good morning, everybody. Welcome along. You're with myself, Dave Montgomery from Later Life Training. Today is Monday. It is the 4th of December, 2022. This is your 8 a.m. movement snack. So it's the first one of the day. Let's decide whether we're going to do it standing or seating. First decision. Standing, I've got my fixed external support available. However, it's a bit prickly because <laughs> I've installed the fireplace wreath. So, uh, it's a little bit prickly, but it's still there, okay? And I've got a clear floor, nothing in the way. I've also got a stone chair if I wanted to do this in seated. <clears throat> so we're set. We're ready to get ourselves going. Now, posture-wise, before we do that, let's check the floor is clear. There's nothing in the way that can cause us any issues. I've got my socks on. That's because I'm going to do it on a solid floor. If you're going to do this on a um, wooden floor, then you'd be looking to have sensible, comfortable footwear on. I haven't got to rush out the door straight away. I've got a few minutes, so I've not got my trainers on as I normally do. But if I am on a solid floor, you're on a solid floor, send some comfortable footwear. Now, posture. Start at the bottom, work our way up. It's exactly the same in seated as it is in standing. Um, and I'm just going to uh, knock off me things because people are trying to comment to me and say um, what's going on. So let me put me disturbed sign on. People are trying to send me messages this morning telling me that things are going on and they're not going to be in work or not come into sessions or whatever so anyway here we go <laughs> heels in line with knees knees in line with hips lift and lengthen to grow that little bit taller shoulders coming up back and pressing down so we open that rib cage lengthen through our neck 
Let's go into the seated position. It's exactly the same as that, lining everything up. But what you need to do to start off with is get yourself into a working position. It's no good doing it from the back of here. We're not gonna get the sort of movement we wanna do. So we lift the back away from the chair. We lift and shift to bring ourselves into the front third of the chair. And then once we're sat in that front third of the chair, this is where we can start to lengthen and sit tall. Starting with our body at the bottom and working our way up, we go for some pedals <clears throat> on our feet. Lifting the heels clear of the floor, that gives us that opportunity to start to get this body moving. And then from there, we're going to take it into a heel raise further, okay, if that makes sense. So we're lifting the heels off the floor at the moment, we're gonna take it that little bit further and just clear the foot of the floor. Start to get that march happening. Now, in seated, this can be quite an arduous task as far as your um, hip flexors are concerned. We've already got them at 90 degrees and now we're asking them to do more work. Whereas in standing, they're not at 90 degrees, they're at 180 and we're asking them to do a little bit more work. So if in seated you need to come back into a heel raise or a diagonal toe tap forward, those are your options. One arm, just the one to start off with. Elbow is bent, it's driven, it's not a swing from the shoulder. It's a driven, purposeful movement, so we start to get some really good rhythm within there. Now, in standing, if we're not using sport, in seated, we can change arms as regularly as we want to. We're gonna change arms in standing if we are using sport, we just need to think about it. So, if we've got sport in front, hand comes down, hand comes off, and that's the key thing. We can change it as many times as we want there as well. There's always a hand on the sport. Therefore, if our hand sport is to the side, it means we're gonna to have to lose the arm, take as many steps as we need to turn into the sport, We've got both hands on as we go past, and then we come around to the other side, and again, take the other hand off, and away we go. Finally, in seated and standing, if we're not using support, we can put both arms and both legs in, so we've got lots of movement happening in that body. We're looking at two minutes, three minutes max here to um, boost the circulation in the body, get the heart pumping, <clears throat> get the um, blood pumping around the body, warming those muscles, loosening those joints and warming those joints. As we get to that three minutes, two minutes, bring it down, make the march smaller, bring it to a foot pedal and a pause, and we're ready to take on our first set of trios. Might need a couple of breaths. Head and shoulders, so start at the bottom as always, base of support, heels in line with knees. Let's have a look here. The neck is lengthened and we lift the shoulders up towards the ears, but then we press them back down, try and take them a little bit lower than they were before. Lift and press. We're looking at four or five of those coming straight up and straight down, trying to get the best range of motion you can. Once you're doing four or five, take a pause and into our rotation, bringing the shoulders forward, lifting towards our ears, squeezing the shoulder blades together as we draw back and then pressing back down. And again, four or five of these is what we're looking for, trying to get that best range of motion that we can. Take a pause after your fourth or fifth, and let's take it into our head turn. Now, support available if you want it. Eye line level, neck lengthened, we turn to the side, we pause in the center, and then we turn the other way. And this little pause in the center is really important. It allows the system in our ears just to sort itself out so that we know what's happening. Turning each side, pausing, turning again. Allow that system to sort itself before we turn across to the other side. Four or five on each side, no pain in your neck, unless you have pain all the time, in which case no new pain is what we're looking for. And then once you're doing four or five, take a pause. We're into the back of the head this time. We're gonna restack the head on top where it should be. So, fingers on chin as a guide only. Now we can either leave the fingers on the chin and here's our movement, or we can Leave the fingers where they are, <clears throat> draw back, pause, and then bring it back into those fingers. Either way, you can see that we're stacking the head back onto the top of the neck, giving ourselves an extra chin, but that's fine. And we're looking at four or five of those. Once we've done those four or five, we pause, and we're ready to have another circulation booster, just to reboost the body before we move to our next trio of movements. So bring that in, have a little march on the spot, just the legs only this time, not too fast. Just a speed that feels comfortable for you. 
And remember in seated we've got that heel raise if we prefer, that foot pedal. 30 seconds is what we're looking at. Just enough to give the body a bit of a reboost as we move from our head and shoulders down into our trunk. Now let's think, arms moving away from the body, that involves the shoulders. How many times do we turn our head in the day? All of those movements are part of our everyday life. The only one that isn't probably is that raise to pull it, uh, drawing the head back and restacking it. But it's an excellent, excellent postural position. It helps the head's really heavy and if that starts to come forward it's going to bring everything else with it. As we get to this 30 seconds, let's bring this down, pause and reset to a wider base of support. Heels outside of our hips in line with our shoulders. Now here, the movement is a side bend. Straight down, straight up with a pause and then straight down the other way. Support in front, you change hands every time. Slightly different if the support's to the side. We come into the support, back to the centre, and then we do it again. You four or five on that side, and then you change to the other side. In seated, it's exactly the same movement. We're using the legs of the chair as a guide, if they go straight down. And our bottom is staying firmly on that chair. So we're not lifting the buttock as we lean across. It's not a lean, it's a lengthen. It's a side bend. So we're reaching down as if we're going to pick something up from the floor beside us. But keeping that bottom firmly on that chair so we lengthen down through the side of the body. Four or five on each side. And there's where you might use it, reaching down to pick something out of a lower cupboard. Reaching down into your trouser pockets if they're that deep. If you've got those cargo pants that have got pockets on the side, for instance. It's that sort of movement that we're going for. Four or five each side. And once you've done your four or five, have a little pause and let's take it into this trunk twist. Now here it's about trying to keep these hips still. So soften knees, really important. Try and focus on the knees and the hips staying towards the front as you rotate the upper part of your body from your waist upwards. Elbows in line with shoulders. We don't want to try and take it too far. If we try and draw back, that tends to encourage us to take that little bit of a turn. So try and keep your elbows in line with shoulders to start off with and, and rotate to the side, pause in the centre. Again, support wise, it's exactly the same. Change hands every time we sit in front, in towards it and back. You may also want to consider putting your bottom against your support or your hips against your support because now in seated, my bottom is going to tell me if I've got movement into my hips because I'll feel the way that the weight is distributed across the buttocks as to whether I've got movement. If I start to feel that moving, then I know, hang on a minute, we've got something going on here. We need to readdress this. So that's support. Leaning, not, not leaning against it, placing yourself against it may give you that little bit of extra impetus to tell you, hang on, something going on here. You need to um, focus on the hips not moving. This is about trying to get this good range of motion here. We turn to the side, continue, don't we? We'll reach to pick something up by the side of us. Seat belts, but rolling over in bed, those sorts of activities as well, uses that trunk area. Now, once you've done your four or five there, let's head into our lower back. Now here, it's not a lean, so we want to focus on this pelvis staying still. So again, soften the knees. We lift the chest and then we extend. And that's what gives us that movement into our lower back. So lift and extend. Come back in and release. And again, you might find using your support gives you that extra bit of input, that sensory input. Because again, he's seated now, I can feel from the way that my bottom and my top part, my thighs are on this bench, on this bench, chair, as to what's happening. Now you notice as well, my eye line stays level, so as I draw back, I give myself another chin. But hey, it's Christmas. Chins are in. <laughs> Come back in and release. Four or five of those, and if you have any lower back pain, that is going to feel really good onto that lower back, helping to ease that, hopefully. Now, once you've done four or five of those, we're back into another circulation booster, but it's the top half of the body only this time, so drawing those elbows back, getting that march going, or swing of the arms going. But still with that 90 degrees, so it's purposeful. We might want to take it a little bit bigger, so drive it back a little bit more, so we get some rotation through that chest as well. Choice is yours. 30 seconds again, and then we're going to head into our final trio, our ankle, feet, and toes. So, if seated is where you are and standing is not where you're looking to come to, at this point you may wish to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 
oh excuse me the front grip onto my throat there you may wish to go and have a look at one of the uh, trunk movements again or the head and shoulder movements and go through those otherwise come with us into our ankle feet and toes as we get to the 30 seconds we bring this down and then we bring it to a pause and we're ready to move in now heels in line with hips in line with knees the leg that is not moving that is going to stay soft at the knee look so soft at the knee not bent not locked not bent soft other foot comes in take the arm to the front eventually but you might have to look to start off with unfortunately i've got a camera i can stay at this level and i can tell toe heel in the same places the heels down i splay my toes as i come on over i scrunch them and then i point them down towards the floor four or five on one side and then i change to the other in seated can do that same movement just gonna need to adjust your legs a little bit to give yourself the best position room wise to get that best movement in or take a little arch on back into your chair once you watch on back into your chair extend one foot away we'll do this one look about a foot about a foot about an inch or two inches off the floor about a foot or two foot off the floor no about an inch or two inches off the floor point the toes away bring them in towards your shin scrunch them flex them now you can pop it down you don't have to but you might want to pop it down between every one or every couple give yourself a rest and also make sure it keeps down there ignore totally what i started to set the view don't allow it to come up here you don't want it two foot off the floor that becomes a strength movement into our quad up here to this big muscle we don't want that we're looking about mobilizing our ankle and why are we looking about mobilizing our ankle because it plays such an important part in our stability once you do four or five on one side you change the other think about how it reacts to the floor underneath you as you walk so as the pavement changes the ankle is going to react to that and allowing you to stay upright so as the, the floor might lean one way, the ankle will allow it to itself to get itself to go across like that, keeping you upright, rather than you just going like that, leading across. So it's really important to keep that ankle mobile. Plus, also, have a look at this. This is a good walking pattern. It's that, that movement through, picking that foot up off the floor, striding into a heel movement, rolling towards the ball of the foot and the toe, rather than a flat-footed or a shuffle-type motion. And the ankle needs to be mobile to allow that to happen because there's that point and flex motion look that's why we do it there you go that is your ATM movement snack for this monday the 4th of december go and have a wonderful day stay active stay moving stay mobile stay crowbarring in additional activities you might even want to put a bit of christmas shopping in there who knows have a great one and i'll see you real soon toodles everybody